Hi, this is Stephanie West with AT Steel University Fall Block 2, 2014. The class is Functional Biomechanics. My biomechanical analysis project is on side splits on the Pilates Reformer. According to English and How, 2007, the Pilates method has become popular with a wide variety of athletes and people seeking fitness and rehabilitation. A key to successful use of the Pilates method of exercise lies in learning the proper way to activate abdominal and spinal muscles to maintain correct positioning while moving other segments of the body. Activation of the trunk stabilizers in a variety of positions is believed to be a key in promoting more efficient performance of recreational and sport activities and activities of daily living. This trunk stabilization is the basis for many trunk stability programs because both upper and lower extremity muscles have proximal anchors at the shoulder and pelvic girdles, respectively. The Pilates Reformer is the most well-known piece of apparatus. It is built on a wooden or metal frame that is rectangular shaped to mimic the frame of the body. The carriage glides along on the frame against spring resistance. Joseph Pilates described the springs as muscles. They help the movement. Less springs equals less help, and more springs equals more help. Depending on the client's relationship to the reformer, which I'm demonstrating in the videos, the client's strength, stretch, stamina, and or stability will be challenged. Side splits on the reformer is an advanced exercise that requires strength and balance. The ideal movement glides the carriage out three to four times with the arms held abducted in a T position. There is a pause on the out moment and a pause on the in moment to challenge the control and strength of the client. During side splits, the internal forces within the body, i.e. the muscles, tendons, and bones, move the carriage along a frame that is held together by springs. The tensile and compressive forces within the body are reflected in the movement of the carriage as it glides back and forth. The less spring resistance, the more difficult the exercise is. Therefore, less force from the body acting on the reformer is needed on the way out and more force from the body acting on the reformer is needed on the way in. The more someone's weight, the more the springs are weighted and the force, the strength, needed to bring the carriage in is increased as well. As the displacement of the carriage increases, the level of challenge also increases. McGinnis 2007 noted that as a vector quantity, displacement, as well as force, has a size and a direction. The goal of side splits is not necessarily how far out the carriage goes, but whether or not the individual can bring it back in. In fact, if heavier springs are used for the heavier individual to assist the return, the further out they push the carriage, the more the springs will recoil and assist the return. It is also important to note that the strength of the abductors of the thigh tend to be stronger than the adductors and are assisted by gravity in the out moment of the movement. McGinnis 2007 noted that linear momentum is the product of an object's mass and its linear velocity. The faster an object moves, the more momentum it has. This momentum can be a safety factor in this exercise. If the carriage has too little spring tension, the person is not strong enough to keep from going all the way out, and or keeping balanced while standing elevated on top of the reformer, the person can fall and get hurt. Proper spotting techniques are recommended when teaching this exercise for the first one to five times the person performs it. After that, the client is a little more independent. However, it is important to note that once a further challenge is needed and springs are removed, the spotting technique of the instructor should come back into play. The variation in side splits is done only when the client can perform the ideal with proper placement of the spine and pelvis to avoid balance issues. The carriage is held in the out position and a twist right and left is added, then repeated when the carriage is in. McGinnis 2007 described several everyday things where torques are present, including jar tops. In the side splits on the reformer, a variation is to hold the carriage in its out position while the client brings his or her arms out to a T. The client then rotates at the waist and perform performs spinal flexion to reach the left hand to the right knee. The image we often use as Pilates instructors is move the lid of the jar, not the base which is why I found the McGinnis example so relevant. 
This is to keep the client from twisting the hips and performing hip flexion instead of spinal flexion. Before the spinal flexion occurs, the rotation of the torso is happening around the axis of the spine. McGinnis 2007 noted that when a muscle contracts, in this case the internal external obliques and multifidus, it creates a pulling force on the limbs, the arms held in the T position. Because of the line of action of the muscle force is some distance from the joint axis, a moment arm exists, and torques about the joint axis are produced by the muscle force on the limbs on either side of the joint where the muscle attaches. The transversus abdominis contracts to maintain the neutral pelvis while spinal rotation is happening. The rotators of the trunk produce a force that bring the distal attachment of the internal and external obliques, costal cartilage of the 8th to 12th ribs, and anterolateral border of the lower 8 ribs, toward the proximal attachment, the iliac crest. The modification for side splits is for the client that maybe is strong enough to do the exercise, but lacks the balance skills, or vice versa. The modification of side splits is also a great teaching tool for those just beginning to learn the exercise. McGinnis 2007 noted that angular kinematics describes angular motion, and this is important because most human movements are the result of angular motions of limbs and joints. This is relevant to side splits, especially in terms of angular displacement. A modification for someone performing side splits, if they are having a hard time coming back in, is to abduct both arms on the way out and adduct them on the way in. The angular displacement can be measured on the way out and or on the way in. Moving along the frontal plane, the axis of rotation is the antero-posterior axis and the displacement is positive using the right hand thumb rule. For the person needing the most assistance with this exercise, the larger the linear displacement of the carriage, linear kinematics, the larger the angular displacement, arm movement, will most likely be. McGinnis 2007 noted that angular kinetics deals with the causes of angular motion. During any exercise on the Pilates Reformer, the carriage is limited and only glides in and out, while the variables are the amount of springs attached, the mass of the person on the Reformer, and the way that individual manipulates their body when performing any of the exercises. While performing side splits, the client runs the risk of losing their balance. Therefore, the ideal version of this exercise is to move the carriage along its path with the arms held in an abducted position. The client is then instructed to lean the upper body ever so slightly forward in a slight hip flexion so that the ribs are now forward of the pelvis. The client is then instructed to slightly tuck the pelvis to balance out and restack the body. An angular interpretation of Newton's third law explains that torques act in pairs and that the effect of equal but opposite torques produced by muscles on different limbs can be observed when balance is needed. When the client overcompensates with the lean forward of the upper body but does not balance it with the tuck of the hips, the result can be the carriage going out too far for the client to bring it back in. This is the preferred direction of falling out of side splits, however since falling backwards would result in a blind descent onto the adjacent reformer in most studios. That concludes my biomechanical analysis of side splits on the Pilates reformer. I know I learned a lot about biomechanics during this project and I hope you learned a little bit about Pilates while watching it.